Rub up your engines! What gasoline should you put in your car? Because you don't want to waste money buying expensive gas you don't need, but you don't want to have the wrong gas in your car either. Well, here's the truth of the matter. Most modern cars are made to run perfectly fine on regular gasoline. Just pull out your owner's manual and look inside. As it says here, use octane rating 87 or higher. Fuel injected engines, all are controlled by computers that make the engine run perfectly fine on regular gasoline. If you throw in higher octane gas, basically you're just wasting your money and throwing it away. And realize that all gasoline sold in the United States by federal law have to contain certain additives so that they don't pollute and that they make the cars run correctly. Now, unfortunately, unlike a milk carton that shows you everything that's in the milk, they don't tell you anything at a gas pump of what ingredients are inside. So, as to what you're actually putting into your gas tank, you never really know, because they're not going to tell you. They're worried about gasoline additive wars, I guess, where they'll have to put more and more additives to compete with each other. But over the last 48 years of fixing and driving cars, I've learned one thing about gasoline. If your car runs fine on the gasoline that you've been using, heck, stick to it, because then you know the additives that are in that gasoline are working quite well for you. As the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But of course, there are exceptions. If you own a Ferrari, they're made for high test gas and they'll only run correctly on that. And take my old motorcycle rusted in the garage here. It's got 14.5 to 1 compression ratio on the engine, it has to run on high test gas. But modern technology technology can make you run on regular gas even with some of these modern fast cars. Take this four cylinder EcoBoost Mustang. It's got 306 horsepower when you run it on high test gas, but it runs perfectly fine on regular gasoline, only it goes down to 260 horsepower then. And if you have an engine that's really worn up and is all carboned up inside, that increases the compression of the engine and they'll run better on high test gas. But if that's the case, you really should have your engine carbon cleaned out with a pressure cleaning machine to make it run correctly and not deal with a problem by just putting high test gas in it. Now a lot of people are always asking me about the use of ethanol in gasoline. I realize most modern gasolines contain 10% ethanol to boost the octane. Now a normal car is not made for running on ethanol. Ethanol can damage things, but the gasoline that has 10% ethanol also has additives in it to prevent ethanol from doing any damage. But if you're thinking about using that E85 that is 85% ethanol, realize you can use that in one of those flex fuel cars that's made to run on regular gas or on this E85 with a high percentage of ethanol in it. Only you need to know one thing about physics then. Ethanol contains about 20% less energy than gasoline. So you're generally gonna get about 20% worse gas mileage than you will with gasoline. So if you're gonna use E85, hey, realize you're gonna get a lot worse gas mileage. Even though it does burn a lot cleaner. So it's your choice, a cleaner burning engine or one that uses more fuel. <laughs> that's up to you. But that's nothing that I have to worry about yet because all my cars are so old, they can't run on E85. They gotta use regular gasoline. Now I've been a mechanic for the last 50 years and believe me, I've seen every scam known to man that promises better gas mileage. You don't wanna fall for any of those. For instance, here's one that was called the Tornadoes. This Asian company was selling it. They claimed you'd stick this in the air filter and it would make the air go like a tornado vortex and get better gas mileage. Total nonsense, the things don't work. Now lately some guys have been making videos on this HHO scam where you get electrolysis and you make the water turn into hydrogen and your car burns the hydrogen. But that's a scam too, because you use more energy and electricity to break the bonds between hydrogen and oxygen than you ever get burning the hydrogen. It's just a silly thing that people are making multi-level marketing companies and ripping you off selling these kits. I've even had guys in the past claim that if you put these magnets on your fuel line, it makes the molecules line up and they burn better. Of course, that's total nonsense too. Years ago, a guy gave me one of those kits. He said, Scotty, you're such a great mechanic. You gotta see this invention. You get better gas mileage. Well, I tested it out and I said, it's nonsense. It doesn't work. Then he said I was an idiot, didn't know what I was talking about. He sure changed his opinion on me when I told him the truth. <laughs> but there are real things you can do to get the best gas mileage. First, make sure you got a clean air filter. Realize for every gallon of gasoline that your car burns, it also burns about 1,100 cubic feet of air. If you don't have free flowing air, you're gonna use more fuel, 
with less air. So just make sure you got a good clean air filter. Then make sure you're using the right oil for your car. It generally says right on the top of the engine. In this case it says use 5W30 energy conserving oil. And in many newer cars it will say use 0W10 oil. That's a full synthetic oil that's very light. Because the lighter the oil, the less friction inside the engine, the better gas mods you're going to use. And remember to change your oil frequently because dirty oil, guess what? It has more friction. You're going to get worse gas mods because there's more friction with dirty oil. And if you use a full synthetic oil, like this dirty old bottle that I find lying under some leaves in my yard that I forgot about, realize they do flow better. And I've had customers switch from regular synthetic oil and they will get slightly better gas mileage. Now, the next thing is air pressure in your tires. You want to have the correct air pressure or you'll get too much rolling resistance and get worse gas mileage. And realize if you're really a fanatic about gas mileage, there are tire companies out there that make special tires that have less rolling resistance and you will actually get a little bit better gas mileage. You can check it out. It's not made up. They have tread designs so they have a little bit less friction and they get better gas mileage. And since the more weight you have, the worse your gas mileage. Make sure you got a relatively empty trunk that doesn't have a bunch of heavy stuff in it. The more weight you carry, the worse your gas mileage. So basically, remove all the excess weight in your car that you don't need, unless you're going on a trip and you're carrying a bunch of stuff, sure, but for everyday driving, keep your car pretty empty. And perhaps the best tip is, Drive conservatively. Conservative driving patterns are the biggest thing for gas mileage. That's why when you're on a highway going 60 miles an hour, you get the best gas mileage because the car's conservative. It's going at a lower RPM. It's not shifting up and down. You're not stepping on the gas, stepping on the brake. Cars burn gasoline. You're always going to the gas station to fill them back up. You want to have a good experience. You don't want to get crappy gas. You want your car to run right. So. What should you do? Well, I know a little bit about gas stations. That's where I started. My father ran a corner Texaco station and I started working there when I was 14. To begin with, realize that most gas stations, hey, they have a very similar gasoline that they're selling. The raw gasoline is created at a petroleum refinery factory. Then they go to like these three million gallon places. Each individual manufacturer then takes out what they want and puts in their own additive package. So realize the base gasoline at most stations is exactly the same as all the other ones around you. The only difference is the additive package that they stick in. And unfortunately for the consumer, none of them ever tell you exactly what these additive packages are. My father, hey, he ran a gas station, but he was more of an intellectual. He liked playing contract bridge. But I asked him once, I said, hey, you know what's in this gasoline you're selling? He says, Hey, I have no idea what's in it. I'm just in the middle, man. <laughs> he wasn't even interested in what was in it. <laughs> I've tried to find out exactly what these additives are. Nobody will tell you. Now, years ago, that decent fuel injection cleaner, Chevron Techron, used to tell you how much additive PEA, that's the main cleaner, was in the can. Years ago, they even stopped telling you that. And I asked a guy once, how come you guys don't show that anymore, what the percentage of cleaner is? And the executive at Chevron just said, oh, Scotty, you know, we don't want to get in an additive war where all the companies say, well, we contain 3%. I know we contain 4%. So they don't even tell you how much is in it. So you really have no idea. The only thing you can really be sure of is that almost all the gasolines in the United States contain 10% ethanol as an octane booster. Now there are some out there that don't contain any ethanol that cost a lot more and some guys with old cars swear by it. But for the average driver out there, you're gonna get 10% ethanol inside your gas. Now when I was a young mechanic, they added lead, tetraethyl lead to the gasoline to raise the octane. They had a big suit in California. So then they switched to ethanol to use ethanol as a booster that now they could do something with all that corn that they grow besides stick it and store it in silos. Plus then it didn't matter the farmers how crappy the corn tasted because no one was eating it. They were just turning it into ethanol to blend with the gasoline. Now the problem with ethanol is if you have too much, it can make a normal car start to run poor and corrode stuff. Now, there are inspections for this, but each state in the United States has individual rules for that. This is an ethanol testing kit. You can get one of these things for like six, seven bucks on Amazon. You could actually test how much ethanol is in the gas that you buy. The states are supposed to do that, but some are real stringent, some aren't. So if you're curious, the next time you fill your car up, you might take a little sample 
do this test. See how much ethanol is in it. And if it's more than 10%, then you're being cheated. Not only can too much ethanol damage your car, you get worse gas mileage. Ethanol contains about 20% less energy than gasoline. So let's say you ran on 100% ethanol, there are some cars that are set up that way, you would get 20% worse gas mileage in that same vehicle than if you used 100% gasoline. How do you choose which gas station to go? Now that I tell you that, really, the base gasoline is pretty much the same in all of them. Top tier stations. That's kind of a game that they're playing between the manufacturers and the manufacturers of gasoline. They've always been fighting back and forth where the car makers say, you can make gasoline really well so our cars will run great. And then the gasoline manufacturers say, hey, you can make cars that can run on any kind of gasoline that we make. They're always battling back and forth. So they came up with this top tier idea that, oh, here's ones that have better additives and la la la, but they never tell you how much additives are in and what type are in at all. So here again, you get stonewalled on, you know, who has the, in quote, best gas, take places that are off-brand. Generally, they buy theirs, what's called the spot market of gasoline. So a place like Kroger, that day, whoever's got the best price, that's who they're gonna buy it from. So from day to day, month to month, week to week, you might be getting different gas at the same pump. It's all the same base gasoline in these three million gallon setups. Each person, each company, puts their own additive package in. So it's not like you're gonna get garbage, at least here in the United States. One of your main reasons to pick a gas station to go to is honest. CBS did a report here in Texas and found out that there were certain stations that were doing what's called pump jumping. This is where the stations keep a little bit of money on the pump before you start pumping. So you're paying for gas that you're not getting pumped into your tank. One Texaco station in Austin got caught doing this 17 times, putting those credit card readers in the machines out at the island. So when they quick put your card in and out, they're reading your card and stealing your credit card information. If you found that your corner station has been reported for having these credit card thefts or pump jumping or any other type of scam, stay away from that station. Around here, they're all self-serve. So if you go in, it's called a convenience station for a reason. You put your card in or you got your phone and you just beep, then you pump your gas. And when you're done, it's supposed to give you a receipt. Well, if that receipt doesn't work and it says, oh, come inside to see cashier, they kind of negated the idea of the convenience station in the first place. So if you go to one of those stations and all the time the printer doesn't work and you gotta go inside, heck, go somewhere else. My father would be rolling over in his grave. Take care of the customers, not just sit there and not even have a machine that works right. The next thing to check on a station you don't wanna go to is check the prices all the time. Just out of curiosity, because when I was a young mechanic, they were mechanical machines. And when the price of gas changed, we had to take the machine apart, we had to get on our Allen wrenches, and we had to reset the price per gallon manually on each pump. But today, of course, it's all done electronically. And there have been cases, depending on the hour, whether it's raining or not, they would change the price that they were selling gasoline at. Check the prices, maybe get your phone out, take pictures during the day at a station near you, and see if the prices change. Just like that Uber stuff where they have Oh, well, now the rates are higher because it's raining outside. Check that out, and if you see there's a station that does that, stay away from them. And here's something that I have seen in the past. You might be paying for a gallon of gasoline, but let's say you're only getting 90% of a gallon when it's being pumped out because it's not metering it right. Where the cylinders were supposed to be filled of 10 gallons of gasoline, but they were only like nine and a quarter. So people cheat on that, they always did in the past. I knew that once when I was a kid. I went to one of these discount stations. This was a long time ago. Gas was selling at 29 cents a gallon and I put exactly one gallon in and it was only about 85% full. They were really cheating. That's probably why it was the cheapest place in town. It's 29 cents a gallon, but they were cheating you on it. So if you ever find a station that was flagged for cheating like that, stay away from it. And if you're curious yourself, Hey, get yourself a gallon gradation. Maybe for your lawnmower, you use it lighter. Put exactly 1.000 gallons in it and see if it's full or not. And if it isn't, you can contact your own state. There's very few times they're tested, even in the states to test. Be lucky if they show up once a year to test the stuff. Guys that run the place, they pretty much know that. So now you know a little bit more about gas stations and which gas station you should avoid at all costs. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.